This project builds on our RStudio auto-scaling project. I'll put a link at the top to that project. Our goal here is to build a scalable cluster of RStudio servers running on Amazon EKS, using containers as a runtime instead of EC2 instances with an AMI and auto-scaling group. We'll begin by provisioning the mini AD instance, which provides centralized authentication for our users. As a part of the AD setup, several sample users are created. Their credentials are stored securely in AWS Secrets Manager. Next, we'll deploy an Amazon EFS file system. This gives us persistent home directories for each user and a shared R library where install packages can be rolled out to all users. We'll also provision an EFS file gateway and a Windows AD admin server to manage the domain. During the demo, we'll log into the AD admin box to show how to add a new user. We'll also show how the EFS storage appears as a map Z drive from the EFS file gateway. Next, we'll create an ECR repository and use Docker to build a custom RStudio image. This image includes compilers and system tools required for building and installing R packages directly into the shared storage. Only members of the RStudio admins group is allowed to install packages for all users. For the runtime, we'll deploy an Amazon EKS cluster with a single managed node group. The maximum number of nodes for this new group is four nodes. Autoscaling will add nodes to the deployment when the average CPU utilization exceeds 60%. Once the EKS cluster is up and running, we'll use kubectl to deploy the RStudio application manifest file. This brings together a secret containing AD and domain configuration, a persistent volume claim backed by EFS, a deployment for the RStudio container as pods, a load balancer ingress for external access, and a horizontal pod autoscaler for scalability. Once all components are deployed, the application load balancer provisions automatically. This gives users a simple web login interface where they can sign in using their AD credentials stored in Secrets Manager. Now let's cover the prerequisites for this project. We have a video out there called AWS and Terraform Easy Setup. I'll put a link at the top. That video, if you've never done one of our projects before, walks through creating the IAM user that you do into the account and extracting out the AWS secret and access key that you need both for Terraform and the AWS CLI. So what you'll need is that AWS account and the secret and access key for accessing the account. Then we'll need the AWS CLI. We use that in the apply scripts to destroy and validate. You also need the latest version of Terraform and you need to install Docker and then you also need to install kubectl. Now we're ready to build the code. So what you'll do is the first thing is go to the documentation and you grab this uh, git clone command. Then paste that in to your Ubuntu development environment and paste that in. And we have now downloaded the code. So the first thing you want to do is you want to run a script called Check ENV. So run Check ENV. So what Check ENV will do is run through all the prerequisites, make sure you have all the commands that are enumerated. Then we'll also make sure that you have the right environment variables for making an AWS connection. And then it will make a connection to make sure those credentials are valid. So at this point, we're ready to do the build. Now the build takes about um, 25 minutes. If you have any questions about this project or comments, please leave them down in the comment section. Okay, the build has completed, so let's take a look at what's got built. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to use kubectl to look at the Kubernetes view of, of the deployment. So the first thing we'll do is we'll do kubectl get pods. And you can see we've got two pods running. Um, and then if we do kubectl get pods and the OY, you'll see that's the one on each, the two different nodes and each one's running on its own node. So the next thing we'll do is we'll do kubectl describe pod rstudio.0. And here you'll see uh, that the, you know, it, it glued up the secrets, rstudio config. It glued up the file claim, the EFS claim, the persistent volume claim. And then it pulled the image from that we built from into ECR. So that's the, the describe. Um, the next thing I'll do is I'll do a logs rstudio.0. And so you can see that it starts the container. It retrieves the credentials from secrets. Then it joins Active Directory. So you be the, show the Active Directory join here. After that's all done, it'll configure a couple of things like the R library paths, and then it'll start the RStudio server. So that's it. Then it's running, and then you get the RStudio Studio server log. The next thing we'll look at is if we can do kube 
CTL, get PVC. This is going to be the persistent volume claim to the ESV, EFS volume that we've provisioned for this project. And then the last one that we'll look at is kubectl get secrets. And that's going to be the information necessary to join the AD. So there's three different pieces of information that are in the secrets, and that's how we join the AD. Now let's go into the AWS console, and let's look at what infrastructure got provisioned as a part of this project. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go to the EC2 section of the console. And in there, you can see we've got uh, five instances running. The first instance is the mini AD instance. It's running in its own subnet. And then beside that, we've got the EFS Samba gateway that allows you to access your EFS data as a Samba server. And then we have the Windows AD admin. In the demo, we'll log into that box to actually add and manage users. The other two nodes here are, uh, or the EC2 instances, these are our studio um, Kubernetes nodes. Uh, we'll see that when we open the you know EKS page, but there's currently two in the auto scaling group. So if you look at the auto scaling group, there's an auto scaling group associated with your Kubernetes nodes. It flexes between two and four. This is completely managed by EKS for you. So you really don't want to mess too much with the, the auto, auto uh, scaling group attributes here because it's it's tuned for EKS. Then we also have the load balancers. And this is what gets provisioned when you push an ingress into um, your Kubernetes with kubectl. It's going to end up provisioning this load balancer as your ingress point for your application. So now what we want to do is we want to look at secrets. An AD was provisioned. Uh, all the user accounts that were provisioned as a part of this project are stored in secrets. So what we'll do is when we go to the demo, we'll probably log in as Raj Patel. You do achieve secret value, and this gives you your credentials that you'll put into our studio to actually log in. So the next thing we're going to go get the Amazon EFS. This is the shared file system that we use for home directories and for the R libs for allowing you know our studio admins to be able to load our libraries for all users. Then after that, we've got the Elastic Container Registry. This is where when we go and we use Docker to build our studio image, it's going to build in here. Then you got the last part of this, and that's the EKS cluster. So let's go to the EKS cluster. And let's look at resources. This is kind of like the cube CTL uh, interface inside of um, the console. So I can go and say default, and that's going to show me my RStudio 0 and 1. And I can go and interact with them a little bit. Um, I, I recommend using kubectl. Then we've got the um, compute. We've got two nodes. We have one node group, which is the RStudio nodes. You know, I'm thinking about doing a Fargate. If you'd like to see this solution using Fargate, leave a comment in the comment section. I'll be happy to do that. To test the cluster, the first thing we're going to do is go back to our validation output. And we've got the ALB endpoint right here. This is the application load balancer. So I'm going to copy this and bring it up in my browser session. And does it say log in? So this is where you put your Active Directory credentials. We're going to log in as R Patel. And I'm going to go in and get his credentials. Copy that. So we've logged in as Raj Patel. And note we have a terminal session in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do ID. And the thing that I keep in mind is Raj Patel is a member of our studio admins. So that means this user can actually install packages. So if you go to your files pane, you've got um, EFS. That's the file system. What I'm going to do is show a couple of examples. So I'm going to go to the cluster. This is the, the project that's pulled um, onto the server when we build it. And so let's go to... Um, our samples and let's look at the cowboy hat. Everybody loves the cowboy hat. I'm gonna run that. And you see you've got the, the cowboy hat here. Um, there's also files. We've got a uh, walk simulation. I'm gonna run that. Every time you run it, you get a different uh, different values. Then what else do we have in here? We've got Harlow, I'll run that. Click on that, click on source, and it's going to run. So those are just sort of a basic R programs that you can run. 
Now, the one thing that I wanted to, to cover here was if I go into back to my file and I go to packages.r, there's various ways you can install packages. There's system libraries and their user libraries. The way I've configured this R Studio is all users can install stuff into their user libraries. But if they happen to be in that group that we talked about, the um, R Studio admins, they can also install packages for everybody else. And the reason that's important is because we're going to run through this package here. And it takes quite a bit of time to install. So I'm going to run this guy right here. And that's going to run ESL and install it in EFS R Lives. So it's going to compile a bunch of stuff. And it's done compiling. And so if I go back to the file system here, and I go up and I go to R Lives, you see it installed into GSL. And so this is installed it for all users. I'm, a, I'm an admin. And so anybody else that logs in from this point forward can in, actually use the GSL package without having to um, compile it again. Now, if I wasn't a member of our studio admins, and what we're going to do is create a user, a new user that is not, you'll see what happens there. You can still do the thing, but you'll have to run it in your own library. The next step in the demo is we are going to add a new user and then test that new user and make sure it works. So what we need to do is we're going to use the Windows AD box. So I'm going to go back. I have the remote desktop connection there. And back in here, and I'm going to put in the Windows instance fully qualified domain. Put that into here. And I, I want to log in as our Studio Patel. So I'll do, um, I need to use a different account, our Studio R Patel. I need to go back to Secrets Manager, pull that out. Put it in there. So the session is going to come up and what we want to do is we want to bring up the administrative tools and go to Active Directory's users and groups. Once Active Directory users and groups come up, so the first thing you want to do is you want to select view and say advanced features. And the reason we're going to do that is because we need to set UID number, UID and GID number for the user to present itself properly on the Linux side. So we've done that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand out the tree here. I'm going to go to users and I'm going to say new user. And I'm going to say Mike Cloud and a user ID of mcloud. Hit next. Put whatever password you want in there. So we've done the first step. We've created the user. And it's in here. So the next thing we need to do is we need to calculate what the next UID number is. And we do have a special script in there. So you bring up the uh, Windows Explorer and you go to the network drive. And so to the, go to the Z drive, which is the EFS mounted through a Samba gateway. And click on our studio cluster and click on utils. And let's run get next UID. Run that. And it's going to go look it up and say, hey, your next UID number is 10,005. So now let's keep that in mind and let's go back to the user and let is bring up the property sheet on it. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to the attribute editor and there's three attributes you need to set. GID number, 10,001 is our studio users. So I'm going to set that. Then I'm going to go to the bottom and find UID, UID number, there's UID. I'm going to put mcloud as the UID. Click on add, okay. And then UID number is 10,005. Let's click okay. Apply, hit okay. And so the one other thing we need to do, we need to go to a member of, and we need to add this user to our studio.users. And then we need to say, I'm just going to put it in the US group. Now, note, we're not going to put them our studio admins group. So it should not allow me to install GSL as this user. Say so here, let's, let's go back to that script and say, get next UID. And it now is does 10,006 because we've set 10,005. At this point, we're ready to test the new user. Okay, so go back to the R Studio login dialog and put in mcloud and put the password that you set. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to terminal and I'm going to say ID. And you should see those UID attributes that we put in there, UID number, GID number, and we're not a member of our studio users. So let's go back to EFS here and let's go to the cluster and we've got the same thing. We got the R sample, so I'm going to click on that. We'll just do a volcano plot just for grins, hit source, and you've got the volcano plot. But what we really want to do is we want to go to the packages.r and I'm going to try to install it in the actual uh, common location, EFSR Live. So I'm going to run that and it's going to go, hey, you don't have permissions is not writable. I want to use your personal library. So we'll, we'll do that. We'll go back to here and comment that out. And this will install it into your personal library. Compile finished. And so if you do, if you go back to your files and let's go up, 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 and let's go to your R. This is in your home directory. And if I click on that, 4.3, it put GSL in the act your actual home directory. So I could use it, but it's just for me. Whereas when I installed with Raj Patel's identity, I could install it for everybody and everybody could skip the compiles. So that's pretty much it for adding a, a new user. You know, you, you do it on the a Windows AD admin box. And at this point, the only thing left to do is to be good stewards of your cloud account and to destroy your project. So I'm going to go back to my um, thing. I'm going to clear and I'm going to do destroy. And the destroy takes about 15 minutes.